the recording. Great. So we are going to cover different things here. And uh, this is, first of all, the 10 Academy philosophy of jobs. This is like a summary of everything we see in the manual and plus everything else around how to navigate job search moving forward. So like the first few slides are just about the summary of the manual. And then the next things are already about uh, navigating job search. And then next we'll be looking at LinkedIn navigation because we do not have any challenge around this. So I decided to combine the two sessions. So for the next session that was supposed to be the LinkedIn navigation, we are going to be covering it here. So we won't be having that specific session later on. Uh, yep, so let's get started. What is our 10 Academy philosophy of jobs? It's just starting in the 2022, the 10 Academy goal has been that 70% of the trainees get into full-time work within the six months with a medium salary of at least a thousand USD. This is the least minimum because majority of your tech roles really provides a really good salary because of the uh, capacity or the current um, job compensation phase. Like it, your compensation burns out here, especially in international companies. It's most of the time way above this amount on a monthly basis. So this has been our goals and everything that we're trying to work on. All the recommended jobs that you will be receiving from the tech team, I, I believe later on today or starting tomorrow, that's when you are going to be receiving different kind of jobs you can start working on from the tech team. And of course, you'll be finding them on the on the tanks platform so yeah they will just be telling us how to navigate that but you know everything we've been doing it was as to achieve these numbers so let's then define what always our employees or the targets or the potential employers are always looking for and how you can show them what you have you know this is the way these are the key questions that each employer will try to answer when they meet you or when they read through your cv or when they go through your github or linkedin profile i mean like every every time they check anything about you these are exactly the kind of answers they are looking for they are looking for an answer on if you are able to deliver a job today to what extent you will be able to grow into a job we will um when they want you to start like immediately after very few days or even immediately just like tomorrow how motivated are you can they rely you rely on you to behave in a professional manner and also are you a good value for money this is the very important question to majority of them why because uh most companies when they are looking forward to be spending, uh, let's say how much, to be spending 10K USD, you know, for a five months project, that means like they are hiring probably 10 people and it is being paid like a thousand USD per month. And this project is supposed to be lasting, let's say for five months, you know, they expect typically that they are going to be getting way over like 300 or even 200 thousand usd from this project so they always want to know if they are about to spend on you are you going to be part of their return on investment because it's an investment that they are trying to make so uh for us exactly uh why did i give you this kind of title please excuse me for a moment because uh this was like priorities the majority of trainees 
I was probably copying this slide, so yeah. <laughs> so priorities for majority of us, sometimes, I mean, not even sometimes, most of the times, our priority is money. We want to get hired because we are looking for a way to develop, to improve ourselves or to grow ourselves financially. And then number two is learning because uh, this is like a real world environment where we are trying to solve real world problems. So learning and getting that experience. Number two is impact because of all these companies are here just to solve different problems around the world. So when you are being part of the impact, um, yeah, it, it, it gives you a sense of human and a sense of knowing that you are spending your time on a daily basis trying to create impact on this world. And then some said, this was from the research from the previous batches, by the way, that's for the introduction. So some other people also said they just want to be part of the community, just part time, because when you are in a community of like minded people, people who you share the same mission within the same field, same understanding of different things, same learning curve, you know, it's always the best thing being part of your people. They are your people. And then respect of peers, because of course, when you have an occupation, you get respect in the communities. So these were like the first five um, things that majority of the trainees said that their priorities when they are navigating job search. But we should be remembering that of course all the time we should be putting our value before our priorities. And what do we mean by our value? First and foremost is your technical skills. Your technical skills answer the very first question we saw before, are you able to do the job today and this is the very first point um, that has to be demonstrated most job description are always the approximation of the actual role partly due to hr process but also partly due to impossibility of finding a perfect match for all aspects of a role so your job here when uh, trying to answer this question for the employer your job here should be to demonstrate that, of course, you understand what they want, what they want uh, when they say that they want you to be part of their job or part of their team. Number two, you should be to demonstrate that you are able to do that job. Number three, if there are parts that you are not able to do right away, for instance, they are looking for certain skills, but for you, you do not have that specific skills then it's always better to let them know how you understand, how you will understand how the two of them map to each other. And then number four, have a sense of where the role fits into the overall organization and have a sense of where your role as a machine learning data engineer or AI engineer, you should be understanding the sense of where this role fits where this role fits. So this is just about your technical skills. And then uh, when we talk about your work ethic, every company we should be remembering that has, they have its own view of how hard one should be working and what is normal in their company and what is not normal. We saw this when we were um, learning more about ethics, about culture, about collaboration, about decision making. This is what makes um, your work ethic put together. It shows how motivated you are to this job and how ready you are going to be approaching it in a professional manner. So, um, and then number three, when they talk about um, your ability to learn first, it's because different companies, even though they need you and you have certain qualifications, but companies of course have different natures. Their products are very different. So how are you going to be learning first to catch up on where the other team that has been there for one year, two years, 10 years are doing, you know, are to where they are currently, your ability to work first, to learn first, and of course, also, of course, 
to work first. And then your ability to contribute and to support a community because they want to know that you are a team player, that you are creative, you are going to be bringing new ideas to the team, you are going to be bringing crucial things to the team, or how you are able to support a community. By this, we mean um, how good are you uh, when, when people ask you what's your role or what people within the teams that you've been part of in the past define you? You know, I, there is this thing I always say when I'm in interviews, I always say that I'm resourceful for all anyone who needs any support. I am resourceful. I sit and approach the problem with them, you know how can we navigate it from the very first point to the last that is supporting them and being resourceful it's knowing exactly how to help them navigate that problem is it any documentation you can share with them any knowledge any explanation any video or anything that will help them navigate that kind of problem so your ability to contribute to and support the community it's something you should always remember when um, you are writing, for instance, cover letters or going to an interview, you should be showcasing this. And then uh, second last, it's your curiosity. Companies really like people who are curious, people who are not the yes, no people. You know, the kind of person you say they should do this, of course, they are good at what they do and you align any task to them and they go all on it they do not ask any question it's just a yes no person they do not discuss they do not debate you of course by the way by asking the right question but being curious this is what creates creativity you might be curious about how certain things work or might be curious about anything within your job scope and you might be surprised when it becomes the next creativity that the company is going to be designing just because you asked one question so they're always looking for someone who is curious and where do we see this in the kind of questions you ask the company at the end of the interview they want to understand the the, the the quality of the question you are asking specifically and then your professionalism of course how you show up um how you show up how you speak the kind of keywords how flexible you are and how good of a human you look, you know. So your professionalism always, of course, we should be wearing this all the time, all the time. We've been trying to practice this um, at Ten Academy, and I believe we have been doing a good job, but not to the people who do not volunteer to speak in stand-up. <laughs> I think that's something we should really, really be taking with ourselves. Do not be called up to say something. Always volunteer to be the one to be known, to have your name on the very first list all the time. When they ask questions, please, you know, show this level of professionalism that you understand what they are asking and you understand what you're going to be answering, and you can keep the conversation going, you know. So any type of being professionalism, let's always wear that hat. So this was like a summary of some of the things we have starting the careers manual, uh, the kind of priorities we know that you have, but also the kind of values we expect you to be wearing always. So let's go then, let's imagine we have all these, of course, not even imagine, just let's assume we have all these, we have our materials ready, we have everything ready. So then how do we navigate job search? Number one, tap into the online job platforms because we are trying to look of course for physical roles within our local communities but also look for different online job platforms because um there are so many advanced companies out here and so many upcoming startups that are trying to solve bigger problems that we can use our big knowledge to to help them you know so it's great to look into online jobs. And of course we are targeting international roles, majority of us. So do not just look on LinkedIn or Indeed, look for other websites. There are many of them since the layoffs happened in the tech sector, 
or in the software as service companies, what we call SaaS companies. I actually believe you know that keyword because in the job search, you are going to be specifically most of the time using it. SaaS companies, that's it in the chat box. So yeah, since the SaaS companies all over the world have started link layoffs, majority of these websites really has been created. So what I would find is one which is called We Work Remotely, Well Found, Jobs Press, or Just Remote, Flex Jobs. When you Google them, you can get even a list of 50 of them. So let's tap into this. Look for different companies. Apply to as many companies you see on these job boards, as many as possible. Number two, tap into the online communities. Search, go on LinkedIn specifically, search for Gen AI, data engineering, machine learning communities. Many have Slack groups. I brought mine here so that I can show you um, how my customer success one looks like. Uh, let me change how, oh, sorry. Let me stop sharing and then share the whole window so that you can see the beautiful part of being. Um, of being part of a community that does the same thing as you do. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? All right. So. It's me, I'm into customer success, customer success or customer experience, like what I'm doing here at Ten Academy. Of course, you are trainees, but business-wise, uh, we business-wise, like revenue-wise, you are always considered as the customers of the company, no matter if it's, it's an NGO or business or for profit company, any beneficiary is considered as customer. So I'm part of different customer success communities, and this is one of them. The one that I really like is the customer success collective. What is the benefit of being here? There are always different kinds of events announced here. Majority of them happen uh, on site, you know, um, like New York, Amsterdam, but some of the events are also virtual meetups where we get to meet and discuss different trends within our sector because customer success has been a thing in different so many technical companies like tech companies tech companies like 10 academy or any other company that sell their softwares or sell any technical related things so it has been a trending thing so we always meet and talk about different things solve different problems solve any kind of questions we meet in different Q and A's, and I get to learn what other companies or what other customer success individuals are doing within their specific companies. There are different um, jobs that are being posted, like almost on a daily basis. Different jobs, like this, comes from people in the companies. This is very different with finding a job on LinkedIn or any job platform, because here I know the person i should be reaching out and if they know me as part of the community they are going to believe me more or to trust me more to give me an interview than anyone anyone outside you know so this is the beautiful part of it they be saying um you know we do this and that and i started a customer success team for instance and i'm hiring for this specific person it's hybrid or remote, like you get to read a lot of things. And of course, if I was open to work, I would be checking every single of it, every single one of it, just to see uh, which one can I be fit of and who can I specifically approach. There are questions. These are the kind of questions that I also learn from. People come here and post different questions they have within their department. This actually, as someone who's looking for a new role, when you are part of a community where people are asking questions that are of situations that are happening internally, you get to have a clue of what other people within your role in other companies are doing. So you get the opportunity to go learn from them 
or involved in different conversation, learn from this. Like people really genuinely answer. Like someone asked, for instance, hey, I'm curious, is anyone, has anyone used AI translation solution for virtual meetings, for instance? I, I don't know what they do in this in her company. But so someone really went all over just to reply them. Imagine. So these are like really good things uh, to learn from. Others be asking, what kind of tools are you using for this and that? People go all over just to answer them. So this is a very good point. You learn from them. You can post something about them. You can have different ideas about different things. You can even approach them in box to know how it works specifically. There are different resources being shared, like free resources. Um, there are different random things being navigated. Like, you know, we completely understand. Oh, uh, yeah. So let me stop recording sorry sharing there but you you can see the beautiful part of being part of a community of people from around the world that do the same thing as you do so yeah there are other platforms like blind like fishbowl like reddit people especially the tech tech people there are so many different groups on reddit where people just go there post questions they have and different experts answer them this is a learning opportunity opportunity and if you are a person who is looking forward to be posting so much more on medium and on linkedin and it's always an interesting one so as you grow your network and you want to be posting more you want to also explore these kind of platforms and um yeah majority of them people post their um People post their questions and answer others' answers. There are links hyperlinked here. So please go check them out. Number three, tap into companies that hire 100 percent remote. I know a few of them, like Deal, Deal, it's a really great company, actually. I, you know, I can recommend that you go vis visit their website. It's a full remote company. And this year when it was starting, they announced that they're going to be opening a thousand plus jobs. They have so far acquired different, like three other companies. So yeah, they are really growing so crazily and they're just five years old. So go check them out. If you see anything that is relevant, it would be great. There is Oyster HR, it's also 100% remote. There is a company called Remote, also 100%. There is Zapia and there are more here. This link has 50 plus other 40. So that's like 90, 90 um, jobs, sorry, 90 companies that are hiring like free remotes. So tap into companies that hire 100% remotes. Majority of the time you will be having, um, you will be having, um, you will be having the, the the chance yeah let me call it a chance to be considered for any role because most of them they won't be targeting a certain location yes they are on this link the five fifty percent okay let's actually check this link so the very first one they these are fully remote companies that let you work from anywhere around the world like they do not majority of them they do not require any specific location that you should be part of but let me show you when we scroll down okay when you scroll down we have another 41 41 more remote companies that hire from specific locations or time zones so we have like team five very good company i've been reading about it uh it's fully remote but only in the us so others are like fully remote but they prefer in countries like in africa they prefer south africa everything everything but i will show you you know um yeah i will show you something later on uh you because you can see that majority of them are saying AU, US, EU, US, but we have others that also say EMEA. EMEA is the um, 
Middle East and Africa, Europe, Middle East and Africa. So our time zone are always aligned. Uh, that's why they prefer people in this specific time zone. So you can just go ahead and actually consider applying here more than you can consider applying here because the, it doesn't harm just to send your CV to this company, even though you know you are not in their time zone, you never know, you never know really. You can just go ahead and drop your application. They might find you valuable and offer you to relocate, you never know. But I'm, for to, to increase your chances, it's better you start by applying for a company where you see that you fit in their time zone. These remote companies, they really value the time zone because if you're in a, in a different time zone, then uh, you know it, would, it wouldn't benefit them or even benefit you. So you might consider applying for this one before you apply for this one, just because you are better fit here. Let's go back here. So go explore those companies. There are so many of them, like free remote companies here and there. They are being created on a daily basis. Uh, because the economy in the tech sector, it's booming big, big time. Um, yeah, to some companies like Deal, but to other companies, for instance, like Oyster has been doing so much layoffs. So yeah, either way, go ahead and apply. The number four, network, network, network. Network, make your face out there, put your name out there attend any industry events like being part of that community i'm able to know any upcoming events where virtual or physical and i always find a way to attend and of course when you attend these events or webinars or virtual meetups you shouldn't just be attending to attend you should attend with a purpose get to know what the event will be about beforehand read a little bit about it prepare some of your views or some of your question. And then when you attend also be attentive and make sure that you speak something. Or if you are, you won't be allowed to speak for those meetups where they just have a panel and they're the ones speaking, make sure that your name is coming up within the comment section. Engage yourself. Because really networking can open doors to hidden job opportunities. You never know. And this comes also to networking on different platforms, especially on LinkedIn, especially on LinkedIn. We are going to see that next when we start talking about LinkedIn, but really connect, connect with professionals in your field and of course express genuine interest in their work. I will show you how I do this. Yeah, how I show genuine interest in their work. And then upskill, which is the very thing and stay relevant continuous learning is very key always identify skills in demand within your industry and then upskill accordingly it can be online courses you can look for certifications or different workshops make sure that you are upskilling continuously then create job search schedule you are going to be doing it like a job here like part of the challenges you have to do here but also take it personally and treat your job such like a full-time job you know create a daily schedule for researching opportunities submitting applications daily schedules for networking and following up on leads consistency is key following up on leads i mean following up on the applications you made we are going to be seeing a point about this. Utilize professional references. Gather references from different previous employers or colleagues or training fellows. We are going to see this on also on another slide on LinkedIn. How do we request for endorsements? Yeah, as you still have the privilege to be here at 10 Academy with your fellows, this is the time to ask like three or four of them to recommend you and especially on different skills. They just don't have to give out a general recommendation. They have to talk about, for instance, a group work you did on a certain project and how you played part of in that specific project, in that recommendation. It really helps. It really helps. And uh, this is about endorsing, but also references ensure that uh, 
when you are looking for a reference in a certain company. For instance, we have different aluminies that are, that are into different companies now. So how do you request them to be your referee? Always just be human, be flexible, approach them on LinkedIn, tell them you are interested in working for the company they are working in and that you would like to refer them, it, that you would like them to refer you. Sorry, if there is any opening that is relevant with your role. Give me a second, sorry. <clears throat> and of course, uh, keep them uh, informed about your job search. Really, this is so helpful. If they tell you there is no current opening in their company, tell them you are looking for a role. And if they happen to see something, tell them to remember you. Number eight, your 10 academic group. You already have your groups. And this is where we want to see you working. We want you to be friends. We want you to be genuine. We want you to be vulnerable within those groups. We want you to show up for each other, have consistent meetings, cheer each other up, keep everyone in check. It's just a very small group. Some just have four people, other have five people. It's not a big number for you just to be friends because you are going to need it. You are going to need people to ask about their experience so far yeah you are also going to need people to be vulnerable too if something is not going really great and then you can have a brainstorming about it we won't be really involved in those groups uh like me or even voters or even anyone we just want to be you and if you feel like you can be comfortable when we are not part of the group also please just drop that note we will leave. And then you can talk openly. But you know, we don't, we are okay to be part of the group though, <laughs> just for that note. And then let's see, we have seen uh, like, let me do like this. We have seen that first of all, where am I going? navigating job search the first thing is tapping into your online job platform tap into the online community tap into companies that hire 100 percent remote network and network and network again upskill and stay relevant create the job search schedule very important and then utilize the professional references then your 10 academic group then let's see when you start applying for the job Number first, we have been saying this, uh, you know, even before starting the jobs phase. This is so research, learn about the company when you are starting to apply. Connect with people in that company, send connections with the notes. Uh, it's much more really great. Let me mute these notifications, they are disturbing us. And then connect with people in that company, send connections with the not. I'm going to send show you how we do this and number three leverage your cover letter to stand out because trust me not many people are sending in cover letters and you writing a cover letter it showed the hiring manager that you really care and number second last connect with the hiring managers when you are applying on linkedin majority of the time majority of the time you are going to see the person who posted that role so connect with them right away number last update everything on tank job feature for easy tracking we are going to be a chat for many roles let's use the available job tracking feature we have we have on tanks to manage our applications to know which cv and which cover letter you sent to which company it helps it helps big time and then prepare for interviews again, practice your interview skills by researching common interview questions and preparing your thoughtful responses. Use the STAR technique or STAR method. This is a 
technique that is used when you are answering the question, especially the situational questions. You start by talking about the situation, what was the task you had to do, what action did you take, and what results did you get from there? Let's, for instance, say they ask you about a recent project you worked on. You first define what that project is, you define the task you had to do to ensure the success of that project. That is what we call the metrics, simply. And then you define the action you took, which is taking them through how you navigated the project, and then talk about the results. This is actually how we always communicate our answers in the interviews. Always know that if one of these things are missing, then you are going to be creating rooms for so many other extra questions, which is okay. But in the very first context, you want them to, um, to see or to hear that uh, every single thing, you do not want to give them a room for any question in the very first place. So yeah. And then conduct mock interviews with friends or family to build confidence. And this is why we requested the video interview preparation. The link for submission is going to be out shortly and submission is tomorrow. I was going to say this at the end of the session, but let me say it now. The submission of the video on interview preparation is tomorrow. We really hope to see that everyone will care to take that video and to submit it that's very very important it's for your own good and also moving forward you should have gotten an example of how to navigate an interview and of course why was this important why was the video important because it's been a very long time since many of us have sat in an interview before you know it's been like six or one year or two years since majority of us sat for an interview so we wanted that video to be an exercise but moving forward you are going to be doing mock interviews with your friends or family to build confidence i do this with my friends to be honest until this time and majority of them they are still on managerial roles others are on senior roles but we still do this they pick up a phone and call me like, Pascalina, you are available. I want that we do a mock interview. I have an interview, for instance, on Friday. So, and then we see it, we do that interview. I give them feedbacks. I tell them like, you were talking too much or you did great here and there, like genuine, like true feedbacks, really hard feedbacks. And then they go knowing what they should be correcting. So that is very, very important. Imagine if that specific, this mock interview was how I replied within the real interview. It will be a red flag at some point. So it's always very great to have mock interviews with your friends. And this is where we are going to be needing that one friend at Time Academy or needing our group people, telling them I have an interview. Guys, do you want to join on a call and you help me answer different questions? They, you, and how you do it, you always share them the job description, the company, and then they read through it, prepare questions for you. And then when you enter in the call, the actors hiring managers, like seriously, no laughing, no short talks. The interns hiring managers, they ask you questions and they take notes. And when you do it as friends, this is why we want you to do it within your groups. Both of you are learning whether it's the one who's asking or whether it's the one who's being asked. Everyone is learning. So yeah, let's take care of this, mock interviews. And then number last, follow up. Always after submitting your application or always after attending your interview, you should be sending a thank you note. For the applications, it should be a note about I have submitted my application for the role you posted. I'm talking about you messaging the hiring manager. You tell them you have submitted your application and that you're interested for the role and you look forward to be speaking very soon. Yeah, that is it. Then after attending the interview, we already know that you should be sending a personalized thank you note to the person who conducted the interview. Very, very important. And then uh, just because we're following up shows, 
your professionalism and enthusiasm for the opportunity. The number almost last, stay resilient and stay positive. Stay resilient and stay positive. Yeah. It, you always get better. You always end up getting that job. Always tell yourself that. It can take one month, three months, three, six months, but as long as you put in the work, know that you will get that job. Stay positive that way. For any rejections that come in, for anything, um, it's, okay, there are two kind of rejections. There is rejection you, you receive after, before doing any interview, like your CV gets rejected, or there is a rejection you receive after like four or five interviews, after you have done the assignment, after you have cured your heart into it, after you have started to convince yourself that you are going to be part of that team. And then boom, you receive a rejection. Let me, trust me, yes, every person who has been into the job search, me, myself, anyone else, we have gone through that. And trust me, it hits really deep. But what do you do? You keep yourself positive. You take it as a learning point. Let me show you um, one person. Okay, I will show you when we get to the LinkedIn. All, pro all kind of examples, I'm going to be showing it to you when we start talking about then professional branding at, on LinkedIn. But before I proceed, I want to ensure that we are still together. Okay, I can see AIS said yes. Abraham, Musa, Rodolphe, Fenuel, Addis. Thank you so much, guys. Let's look into LinkedIn. And this is where we are going to be seeing many um, examples. So, LinkedIn, when we talk about LinkedIn, we hear about professional branding. It's a professional branding platform. You know, um, we should be remembering that one of the biggest changes for job seekers 10 years ago versus now is the importance of intentional online branding. Platforms, of course, not only LinkedIn, but GitHub, Twitter, Facebook, etc. they have changed. I wrote in here Twitter because I know this person who has been saying how he got a very nice gig from Twitter. It's a kind of blockchain company and he joined us as a software developer and he just found that very simple post on Twitter. He sent in his application on Twitter inbox, went to one interview, two interviews, he got the job, very nice jobs. So any platform that you can be able to find your role, drop in your application. It doesn't take you a long time just to drop in your application. So number very first thing when we talk about LinkedIn, we have updated all features and the only thing that is up, that is left is the recommendation part. It's the recommendation part. Let me show you, uh, for instance, I will go on my page. So for instance, this was when I was uh, leaving the company called Oyster, I told my manager, can you send me a recommendation? I believe it was going to be, I believed that time, it was going to be very short, but he went up and down just to explain everything. And then he told me for, uh, for anyone who might need any kind of recommendation from him as well, you know, feel free to reach out. And when he's sending personalized kind of recommendation to them, he sent them in numbers. What have I achieved there in terms of bringing revenue to the company? Because that's part of like the biggest part of our responsibility. So yeah, this is it. Get recommendations too. You can give or receive recommendations. So this is one of the, the recommendations I got. Receive the recommendation from your people, uh, 10 Academy ones. You can start there. What I was talking about, how they can recommend you on how you've been part of a group that worked on a certain project or how you have been a good colleague, good team player, a good human being at 10 Academy, they leverage on that. If you have been part of other previous communities as well, ask other people just to give you a recommendation. At, at least have like three recommendations 
on your uh, on your LinkedIn page. This is the very first thing to take care about. And now number two, grow your network. Take time to connect with people. The minimum number should be 500. Actually, your LinkedIn starts to boost when you have like over 500 uh, connection. And of course, uh, when someone visits your page and they see that you have like 30 connections, they immediately think that you are not active on LinkedIn. You are not posting, you are not following anyone, you are not actually using LinkedIn at all. So if you have like less than 100 connections right now, take time. When you get time, take time to connect with people in the same role, take time to connect with high level influencers in the same role, hiring managers in the same role. The people in your dream companies, the kind of company you want to really work for when you really grow professionally, then connect with the people in the companies that you have submitted your applications to. This is when you start applying. And then connect with your former and also current colleagues because you never know. When you keep yourself um, present online, and for instance, it's you, for instance, it's like AI who's doing it, and you probably have completed 10 academy trainings and you're no longer like together like how you are now. And Carol suddenly finds a certain opportunity. And he has been seeing you being active on LinkedIn and posting about your stuff. He is immediately going to be thinking about you. Like, hey, Carol, hey, um, hey, I, uh, I saw this kind of opportunity and that one. And I believe you can be a very good fit. I recommended someone very recently to a company that I even do not know about, but would really want to. It's like my dream company is deal, the company I was telling you. <laughs> so, but I know this person, Kevin. He left Greenhouse. I actually asked him for it, the permission to share this. But yeah, this is Kevin. He left Greenhouse. He got laid off because of the layoffs that has been happening. But he's a big customer success manager and he has been part of the top 100 customer success strategist in 2022 this is something that is put out by the success league it's like a bigger community of customer success managers so i've been reading about it and then recently i realized that the head of customer success the like global customer success manager to a company called deal they are looking for the head of onboarding so i had to tell him there is a company I, I had to tell him like hi kevin i've known you for a while learned a couple of things from you you are an excellent csm really so there is this company i'm targeting to apply when it's the right time like i don't know like in the next two years or next three or five years because i am not planning to be living here very soon but yeah but i think for you you are a perfect fit for most of their open csm role I told him about the company and I told them him about the global CSM manager, Luke, who is looking for the head of onboarding. This is how you create your online presence. Like this person really, he's an inspiration. And he got a recommendation just from me, a total stranger who doesn't know him and he's probably into the process of applying there. So yeah, keep yourself there big time. Oh. Nobody told me I wasn't sharing here. But yeah, this is Kevin. This is Kevin. I didn't know I was no prof. Okay, let me start with the recommendation. This is the recommendation I received. Sorry. Uh, this is the recommendation I received from my manager. And this is the person I was talking about, Kevin. And I believe he has been receiving many recommendations from other many people because he posts about himself like, almost on a weekly basis. So um, where am I? Let's go back. These are really grow your grow your network. And then number four, leverage the search feature search by schools search by remote jobs we are going to see that search by hashtags search by using posts 
or even groups. So leverage the SAT feature, SAT for everything that you are curious to know about. Then leverage other features, home, job search, messaging, and notification. All the best. So let's go into LinkedIn then specifically. See um, what we are interested in seeing in the very first place. So when we are talking about home, uh, your home, everything that appears is the everything that you build. Everything that you build. Majority of my things here, it's going to be about customer success because that is my main focus. It's going to be about mostly in the industries, especially education industries like 10 Academy that I am most of the time really interested in. And yeah, so your home has everything that you are interested in. Then your network, it has, it has the people, your connection, your contacts, the groups you belong to, any kind of events that you continuously attend. I have five events that are always occurring, so I always go to them. Pages, newsletters, everything, anyone you want to act, to connect with or anyone, you are, anyone else you're interested in connecting with, it should be appearing here. Then when it comes to job face, but before we go into the job face, there is something I wanted to show you about, about activities. Let's go back to Kevin profile. Like something I have been learning and that I believe you can also learn from it. So this is our Kevin. And let me show you this section of himself, activity, activity, him posting. Let me show you the kind of things he posts about as he, as, as he is looking for um, his next role. So here's how he announced that he's open to work. When you say that you are open to work, I saw majority of us posting it that you are looking for your next role but you should be imagining that the people reading that do not know you at all they do not know you at all so just saying that you're looking for a next role it doesn't so much help it doesn't so much help so you should be providing them like a little spice of your value so he said that it was one month ago that his incredible journey at Greenhouse just ended and that he is marking the beginning of his new career. Then he continued to deliver, he, to communicate his value as a seasoned five-year veteran in customer success. He had veteran because in including different companies, they are also you know, looking forward to hire people like women or people of disability or veterans, you know, so this is a value to him. I bring wealth of uh, experience in growing CS organization, writing customer success publication, and everything customer success. This doesn't concern us. But he communicated his value and he communicated the action that he needs to see. And yeah, it got like quite a number of comments. Then he went away to be sharing his journey within the job search. This post is about how he believed his kind of um, the very best CSM, but how the job search face is really humbling him. And he was so vulnerable about it. Vulnerable just to say like, yeah, this is what I'm going through. He said that I lost both opportunities that he was working on. Oh, for, let me start here. In 350 applications, guys, when we are talking about that we need to do 200 applications on a monthly basis, it's a really low number compared to the craziness out here. So you can be lucky just to get it after one application, 10 applications, but don't be surprised when it gets into 200. So here he said, in 350 applications, I have received five interviews, five in 350. Two of them made it to the final round. I lost both opportunities after four interviews each and a mock EBR. This is the biggest thing in our department that I poured my heart into. Like, yo, 
you know so this was just him being vulnerable here and sharing his progress i do not really mind you about updating the community about this but uh you know you can do or you can't do what i want you to be doing it's here so he went ahead and shared his experience in the previous interviews especially the mock ibiras this is the biggest thing for hiring manager who wants to visit his page and see his capabilities he's gonna read it from uh how he navigates this kind of mock interviews this is like um sorry from this specific interview experience this is our assignment most of the time when we are applying so yeah he went ahead and this and defined what the assignment was about it was a mock ibiara and gong will be his pretended customer he went into how he navigated it everything else and shared his presentation that he shared within the interview here very good point i actually liked reading about this so yeah if i was a hiring manager i believe i'll be considering him if i had an open position just for an interview so yeah and then he kept uh posting what he would use his what he will use his lesson to different companies that he's targeting i believe he's targeting to be working for this disneyland resort yes and uh he went ahead and designed how he would see the differences in customer experience at disneyland resort he just gave a whole presentation and a whole caption here explaining it what i would use my knowledge of different real world problems in different company. This was about Disneyland. This is about MGM Resorts Internationals. He's American, so I believe these are really things within their country. He went ahead to talk about at cost coho cell, like you, you know, I like his page. He is very intentional about everything and he writes everything down. And I want us all to learn from him. When we keep posting, you can post about yourself, post about the project you have been working on, and then also posting about how that knowledge can solve real world problems. So when you are looking for things to post, imagine it in that way. You will surely get topics to post about. So that's what I wanted to say about your activity or your activity feature on your LinkedIn. So yeah, let's take this as a learning point. I believe this is so helpful. So yeah, let's go then into our job search feature. When you click here, they will bring you majority of the things you like to search for. They brought me data engineering because I've been looking for the other job description to use in different assignments in the past days. But these are not the ones that are mainly on on my page but let's see how we do it when you click on jobs go here and search for let's say ai engineer they are going to be giving you like all of them junior roles senior roles managerial roles everything they are going to be bringing you everything but before you check on each one of them be come here and filter what you want to see is it in the us that you want to target is it emia for me all the time i advise that we put emia this is europe and middle east and africa so that means you will be considered like everything that is here is relevant and then come here pick the in entry the experience level entry level or associate for you to see the differences but uh i advise that at this time we can just filter entry level you can filter associate level if you would just want to see the roles that are there. but entry level yep and now here we are we have remote jobs in emia yes of course click remote much better and then everything comes here everything comes here then check out of each one of them 
then apply. And here's what I said by texting the hiring manager. This is the hiring manager. I think LinkedIn has made it um, uh, has made it. Uh, how do we call it? Like the the hiring managers should be putting their name out here for people to see that these are legit roles. I can see this one do not have, but it also has language that is confusing. It's in Poland. So, but here we have if there is no person here who's being featured as, as the hiring manager, go ahead and click on the company here, or click on, but click on the company, and then go to people, and then search for recruiters or hiring, or let's see, like for this one, head of engineering, senior software, founder, um yeah just, but just start for recruiters not sure why i'm not seeing any recruiter but it's probably the ceo who posted it you never know if okay let's say in case you do not find any recruiter being here look for someone in the same field as you if you're looking for air engineers check if they have any other air engineer if they do not have check for another a re relevant role, for instance, message this person, head of engineering, or the software engineer, he absolutely probably have the information on this role, or he can find out, or find anyone, anyone else within, uh, they have the machine learning engineer, like, be checking up on those, message them, tell them you applied, and ask them if there is any way actually they can support you in their application process. They will probably sometimes tell you, oh, I don't know who is hiring for this role, but I can find out. Yes, people really like to help. If they say they can find out, then keep them in check. Keep following up. Ask them, did you find who is actually hiring for this role? Or how is the hiring process within your company? Or do you know anyone who I can reach directly for further support? Like, go into all of it. Here, I'm going to be showing you the person I reached out when I needed a role in a company called Oyster. I do this every time when, even coming at 10 Academy, do not tell Arun, but, you know, <laughs> I had to look for someone who work at 10 Academy um, just to understand how is how is 10 Academy, how is the culture like, who is the person they are looking for. But let me show you the person I reached out when I first applied for my first international job, which was at Oyster. I told him, I of course sent him, sent him a connection request and he accepted. And then I went ahead and told him that I've got, I got rescheduled for an interview. Here's how I told him. Hi, Amin. It was our very first conversation. I liked your post about your experience at Oyster. Start by appreciating them. If you can see anything, anything, if they haven't posted in a while, then talk about that you like what they are doing in that company what the company is doing in general. So I continue to say, it's so amazing and happy for you for everything you are achieving with it. So then I introduced myself. I'm Pascaline and happy to meet you. I'm applying at Oyster and I'm, I'm happy to come around your account because I've been looking for general support from someone who works there as I prepare for my interview. Would you like to help? If yes, I will go ahead and elaborate. Let's connect. This was the only message. This was back in 2022. This was the only message. And he said, hi, Pascaline. Good luck with your job hunt. Oh, is this a great place? Like everything. We went ahead. And then I kept asking him questions because this was an international company. I wanted everything to be perfect. I told him I'm about the person I was going to meet. You know, I told him that I was going to be meeting Amanda, and I think she is part of the management. She was the VP of the company. And then I, I asked him, how are the conversations like? 
And then I put here my WhatsApp number in case you wanted to get a voice note or to even uh, just chat quickly on WhatsApp. So yeah, I had my questions here and that was it. So he took voice notes, explained everything. We went through, it, like it was a long chat. And let me show you, uh, yeah, I kept asking him questions just to understand the company very well because it was complicated to understand. So I kept digging and asking him and he was so genuine to say everything. Uh -huh. So that was for the conversation. Uh, let's keep going. So yeah, I texted him again saying, Amy, hi, I'm so happy that this time I have good news. I got it over today. He celebrated me. We became friends since that time. We are still friends. So yeah, hoping text someone. Hoping text someone, you never know. Now let's go back to our job section. <laughs> so we already saw uh, that we filter this and then we filter everything we are looking for. The jobs, entry level, that posted, I think it doesn't matter. The company, I think it doesn't matter. And then you prefer, you click remote and then EBA and you search for jobs and apply. I do not, please do not reflect on the easy apply. It's the easy application process, but, but really it's not recommended. Go to the website, go to the website, their website specifically. I'm pretty sure you will find this role there. Unless you don't find it, come here and apply with the options they get. But if it's on their website, this company's website, then go ahead and um, yeah, then go ahead and apply from the website. It's so much better. And then we have the messaging part of everything. This is it, just messaging our people. And then the notification parts. Uh, let me show you how to put in notifications. I, like a long time ago, I put in notifications for these customers manager roles and they keep showing up on a daily basis daily basis most of them so let's see how we get notifications let's now search for data engineer in EMEA you set alerts here set alert and but of course set alert for the things you want to see specifically and they are remote they give you 2000 plus roles Set alerts, put this here so that you can be receiving notifications about these specific roles. If you have a company, for instance, let's go to deal. If you have a company that you are interested in working for, go here on jobs. then click here on create job alerts and then write the job title for instance it's ai engineer here we have then location just write remote and then you can keep all this by the way just do not just click remote because you want to explore any other AI engineer roles they have probably on site or hybrid, but Deal is a full remote company, so not necessary. And then create, create, click here on creating job alerts. And that be it. Let me see if there is anything we forgot to talk about, but I don't think there is anything we forgot to talk about. But and by creating Alerts, I believe Aya, you are the one who asked that question in the previous session. So I hope you saw uh, how we do it specifically. So any questions? This was a long session. So thank you for sticking around. Do we have any questions? We can even say no if we don't have any questions.
Can you hear me? It's clear. Thank you, AI for yeah. Uh, something else I like about Deal, just something I realized now. So here's Deal, and when you search for it, they give you other companies like Deal. So his remote, they do they are the competitors of Deal. His oyster, the competitors of Deal, the risk multiplier, and there are so many others. So when you are looking for your target company, uh, let's say it's people who wants to work for Ten Academy, uh, Ten Academy employer partner Adulio, you can search for it, and in, in this section they will show you other companies like it, other software companies like it, and then you have other more options of where to apply, and which companies to follow as well. So yeah, so um let's see what kind of actions are we taking from here we are going to grow a network to 500 people maximum or me sorry minimum 500 people we are going to start thinking of what to post we are going to search for uh the communities of the same people as us ai engineers or data engineers or anyone we are going to search for those communities and join them. And above all, we are going to be starting to look out for jobs. So how we saw which platforms, we saw companies that are hiring remotely, we saw how to create job balance or how to look for different job postings on LinkedIn. We saw uh, how to cold email people, how to reach out people. You can just be and just define your your email the email this message this linkedin message as how you want just to show that you are asking them to talk further yeah and uh, what else did we see yeah everything else i think is common with what we saw in the previous sessions but let's go ahead and start doing that and also, let's remember that the deadline for submission for the interview video is tomorrow. And also today, we have the TPF submission. Not sure if Rod has told you about it, but check on the schedule and see we have the TPF, your first March TPF document. Yeah, you are going to be submitting on LinkedIn. I believe let let me reach out Rhodes and Arun ask how we are supposed to be submitting specifically but let's take care of that in the meantime tpf yeah tpf interview video and then navigating this whole job search after all i'm seeing us landing these jobs like i cannot wait to see the second person after Bini landing their job big time so yeah thank you so much everyone for joining let's go and enjoy the rest of our day